and welcome to Frederick County Public Library's Storytime. My name is Miss Suzanne. Some of you may know me from our forensic branch, and today I will be leading Storytime with you. Let's sing our hello song. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Let's do that one more time. Can you try the American Sign Language signs with me this time? It's hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Great job. Friends, I am so excited to be here with you today. I have some wonderful stories that I can't wait for us to read together. Today, we are going to be talking about being thankful. We're going to be talking about food and family. These are all things I love. What are some things that you're thankful for? Are you thankful for your grown-ups and your family? Are you thankful for your favorite toy? Are you thankful for sunshine on a cool autumn day? Are you thankful for your favorite book? There are so many things to be thankful for. Being thankful means that you love something so much because it's special to you and you appreciate it. Let's sing a song about being thankful to get ready for our first story. This is a tune I think you probably know. It's, if you're happy and you know it, but this time we're gonna sing it if you're thankful and you know it. Ready to try it? Let's go. If you're thankful and you know it, clap your hands. If you're thankful and you know it, clap your hands. If you're thankful and you know it, and you really wanna show it, if you're thankful and you know it, clap your hands. If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're thankful and you know it, and you really wanna show it, if you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're thankful and you know it, say I am, I am. If you're thankful and you know it, say I am, I am. If you're thankful and you know it, and you really wanna show it, if you're thankful and you know it, say I am, I am. Now, let's put them all together. Are you ready? If you're thankful and you know it, do all three. I am. If you're thankful and you know it, do all three. If you're thankful and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're thankful and you know it, do all three. I am! Friends, that was great. I can feel how thankful you are. Friends, let's read our first story of the day. This book is called Fry Bread, and I am reading this today with permission from Macmillan Publishers, so thank you. Fry Bread, a Native American family story, written by Kevin Noble Millard, and illustrated by Juana martinez Neal. Fry Bread is food. Flour, salt, water, cornmeal, baking powder, perhaps milk, maybe sugar, all mixed together in a big bowl. Fry bread is shape. Hands mold the dough flat like a pancake, round like a ball, or puffy like Nana's softest pillow. Fry bread is sound. The skillet clangs on the stove. The fire blazes from below. Drop the dough in the skillet. 
the bubbles sizzle and pop. Fry bread is color, golden brown, tan or yellow, deep like coffee, sienna or earth, light like snow and cream, warm like rays of sun. Fry bread is flavor. See beans or soup. Smell tacos, cheese, and vegetables. Delight in honey and jam. Rise to discover what brings us together. Fry bread is time. On weekends and holidays, supper or dinner, powwows and festivals, moments together with family and friends. Fry bread is art, sculpture, landscape, portrait, our daily craft shared from teacher to student, a cycle of heritage and fortune. Fry bread is history, the long walk the stolen land, strangers in our own world, with unknown food, we made new recipes from what we had. Fry bread is place, Alaska, Kansas, all the way to Maine, down to Delaware, on to Georgia, over to Oklahoma, Colorado, and California cities and lands we call home. Fry bread is nation. Abenaki, Apache, Arapaho, Ojibwe, Onondaga, Ogala Sioux, Narragansett, Navajo, Nipmuc, Seminole, Shoshone, Sac, and Fox. Hundreds and hundreds of tribes. Fry bread is everything. Round, flat, large, small, north, south, east, west. Brown, yellow, black, white, familiar and foreign, old and new. We come together. Fry bread is us. We are still here. Elder and young, friend and neighbor. We strengthen each other to learn, change, and survive. Fry bread is you. I just love that book, friends. Did you notice that the author of Fry Bread wrote a lot about our five senses in that book? What are our five senses, you ask? Well, those are the things that we can see, we can hear, we can smell, we can taste and we can touch. In fry bread, the author talked about how you could hear the fry bread sizzling in the skillet or how it tasted and how it smelled. Friends, can we use our five senses together to think of some things that we're thankful for? Let's try it. Look around you. Look in the room where you're sitting right now and find something that you can see that you're thankful for. I can see out my window and I'm thankful for the sun in the sky. What can you hear right now where you're at? Do you hear birds chirping? Do you hear water? What can you hear that you're thankful for? 
I could hear you all singing our song a little while ago, and that made me thankful. What can you smell that you're thankful for? What does it smell like where you're at right now? Or can you think of a happy memory from something that you smelled that you're thankful for? I love the smell of chocolate chip cookies baking in the oven. I can smell them right now. Try and take a big smell. And what did you notice? Are you thankful for that? Great job. What about taste? Now, you might not be eating something right now, but I'm sure you can think about the way something that you're thankful for tastes. Maybe your favorite snack or your favorite dinner. Do you like grilled cheese sandwiches? I do. And I can taste that grilled cheese on my tongue right now if I just imagine it. And that makes me so thankful for a hot meal. Friends, what can you touch that you're thankful for? I have my friend Bear right here, and he is so soft and cuddly and squishable, and I just love the way he feels when I touch him. What can you touch that you're thankful for? Thanks for trying that with me. Our five senses can tell us so much about the world, including the things that we're thankful for. Let's read our next story. This book is called Thank You, Amu. And we've been given permission by little brown young readers to read this book to you today. So thank you. Thank You, Amu by Ogi Mora. A note to the reader. Amu, which is pronounced Amu, is the Igbo term for queen. On the corner of First Street and Long Street, on the very top floor, Amu was cooking a thick red stew in a big fat pot for a nice evening meal. She seasoned and stirred it and took a small taste. What a delicious stew, Amu said. Tonight's dinner will surely be the best I have ever had. <clears throat> With that, Amu put down her spoon and went to read a book before supper. As the thick red stew simmered on the stove, its scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street, and around the block until, knock, someone was at the door. When Amu opened it, she saw a little boy. Little boy, Amu exclaimed, what brings you to my home? I was playing with my race car down the hall when I smelled the most delicious smell, the little boy replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Mmm, stew, he sighed. That sure sounds yummy. <clears throat> Amu thought for a moment. She was saving her stew for dinner, but she had made quite a bit. It would not hurt to share. Would you like some? The little boy nodded. And so Amu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Amu, the little boy said, and went on his way. With that, Amu closed the door and went back to her book. As she read, her thick red stew's scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall toward the street, and around the block until, knock knock, someone was at the door. When Amu opened the door, this time she saw 
a police officer. Miss Police Officer, Amu exclaimed, what brings you to my house? I was on duty down the street when I smelled the most delicious smell, Miss Police Officer replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Ah, stew, she said, and her mouth watered. That sounds mighty tasty. Amu thought for a moment. There was still enough to share. Would you like some? The police officer nodded. Once again, Amu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Thank you, Amu, the officer said and went on her way. And so for the second time, Amu closed the door and went back to her book. Sure enough, as she read, her thick red stew's scrumptious scent wafted out the window and out the door, down the hall, toward the street, and around the block until... Knock, knock, knock! This, again, someone was at Amu's door. This time when she opened it, she saw... A hot dog vendor! Mr. Hot Dog Vendor! Amu exclaimed. What brings you to my home? I was selling my hot dogs down the block when I smelled the most delicious smell, Mr. Hot Dog Vendor replied. What is it? Thick red stew. Oh, stew. The vendor licked his lips. That sounds quite delectable. So Amu spooned out some thick red stew from the big fat pot for her nice evening meal. Mm, thank you, Amu, the hot dog vendor said and went on his way. Throughout the day, people from all across the neighborhood knocked on Amu's door. She said a shop owner, a cab driver, a doctor, an actor, a lawyer, a dancer, a bus driver, a construction worker, even the mayor stopped by. And each time they knocked, Amu shared. Soon the sky darkened, the street lights brightened, and it was finally time for dinner. But when Amu opened her big fat pot of thick red stew for her nice evening meal, it was empty. Amu sniffled. There goes the best dinner I ever had. Sorry and blue, she sat at the table with her empty pot until knock, 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 knock. Who could that be? Amu wondered. When she opened her door, she saw the little boy, the police officer, the hot dog vendor, the shop owner, the cab driver, the doctor, the actor, the lawyer, the dancer, the baker. Why, everyone she fed today was at her door. I'm sorry, everyone, Amu sighed. My thick red stew is all gone. I have nothing left to share. The little boy tugged at Amu's sleeve. Don't worry, Amu. We are not here to ask. We are here to give. The police officer carried in a fresh salad. The mayor entered with a roast chicken. The baker brought a collection of sweet goodies. Even the little boy presented Amu with something special in a shiny red envelope. Everyone who had knocked on Amu's door that day squeezed inside her tiny apartment and together they ate, danced, and celebrated.
While Amu's big fat pot of thick red stew was empty, her heart was full of happiness and love. That dinner was the best she had ever had. I really loved that book. Friends, we've talked so much today about being thankful and about yummy foods and about family, and I hope you've enjoyed our time together as much as I have. But now it's time to say goodbye, and we're going to sing the goodbye song the same way we sang our hello song, except instead of hello, it's goodbye. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Let's sing it one more time. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you for watching today. I'm so thankful for you.